with us now from Houston presidential historian Douglas Brinkley. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie. Uh, Winston Churchill, I think, famously once said that history will be kind to me because I will write it. Uh, <laughs> Barack Obama wrote his own self profile called Dreams, I think. What was it called? Dreams of My Father, my father. from My Father. And mm -hmm. uh, now we have this book. Have you read it? I've only read the excerpts and the news reports. Uh, the book does not come out till uh, mid June. Do you get here a picture that is different from the one the president? Uh, said about himself, and if it is different, does it matter? Because it's the difference between autobiography and biography. Well, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of compression that uh, President Obama used in his book. Uh, some of the uh, the women that we read about now in the Vanity Fair piece had, were compressed by the president. But they're two two different breeds: autobiography and history. David Marinus is a very fine biographer. He's written excellent books on Roberto Clemente and Bill Clinton and many others. Uh, and so he's credible. He's a longtime Washington Post reporter, and he's done the best job of uh, really giving us the factual timeline of the president's uh, accidental college move to New York City and what he did in New York, not just who his girlfriends are, but how he was fighting for racial identity. Mm -hmm. Douglas, you know, I, I like you. I've only seen the excerpts, too. I was reading in the Vanity Fair. I'm thinking, everybody get ready for the sarong jokes. And it also makes me think, <laughs> is it relevant what someone had to say about you 22 years ago, a former girlfriend from years ago? Is that relevant? I'm thinking, is there anybody that wants to hear what an ex has to say 22, 25 years later? I don't think that part's relevant. What's interesting, it's this all takes place in the early 1980s when people still hand wrote journals and wrote letters. And I think the intellectual development of Barack Obama is fairly interesting. His talking about the deep connection he feels to the conservatism of T.S. Eliot, for example, or why he prefers African American playwrights uh, yeah. to, um, to white ones. I, and particularly, I think, uh, according to one of his friends, not one of the girlfriends, but a friend, was the president's obsession with the wonderful and classic novel by Ralph Ellison, An Invisible, Invisible Man. Man right. uh, all of this just adds credence to the president's own memoir. But here you see this young, young person trying to, in his 20s, decide whether he's white or black or how to be an international person. So there's aspects. I, I think the girlfriend things are a little less interested than here's a, a young man at Ivy League school, Columbia, uh, what he's reading, what he's talking about. Uh, he doesn't get in a lot of trouble. His idea of fun is a New York Times crossword puzzle and <laughs> debating the philosophy of Nietzsche. <laughs> what, what comes across here is the, the, uh, the notion that this is a young man uh, clearly with the remarkable ability, but who was also ambitious and, and, and really had a plan and was looking to find his own way to the things that he wanted to do, which I find not unusual for someone of his talent. Well, exactly, and the talent is what he was. And um, some of the letters and writing we see of Barack Obama is quite guarded. Uh, he's not putting himself up on the line. Um, you know, he's not exposing his personality. He's keeping a lot to himself. And we see that sort of aloofness sometimes with his presidential leadership. He's very zen-like and self-contained now as president, and we see that even in an yeah, early exactly. age he was that. Yes. And, uh, yes. what, what do you think the White House reaction will or should be to this? I just don't think they need to. They already reacted right. in the sense that David uh, Marinus has given an interview, and the president respects him enough to have spoken to him about this, and I think that's enough. Well, I, he spoke to him for 90 minutes, which is quite long for yeah. an interview with the president, yeah. suggesting that he wanted to make sure that David understood his own narrative and that he had an opportunity uh, to define himself in a conversation with David. That's right. If this material in somebody else's hands would be more worrisome. Right. Yes. But I have a feeling that this whole book's going to be uh, very fair and very solid, like all of David's work is. I want to pull a Pulitzer right. Prize for the Bill Clinton biography. Thank you, Douglas Brinkley. Thank That's you right. very much for joining us today.